How do you get over fear in your life? Uh, you suppress it. Yeah. Somehow. Uh, you never fear by for thinking, your life? thinking of what you need to do to be alert to handle anything that's clouding your mind. See, I grew up with FDR. Uh, right. The, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Your father was a, a pilot. He wanted you to be the first man to walk on the moon. Isn't that the truth? My father really didn't understand the rocket business all that well. Right. I mean, he thought that uh, you ought to be able to rescue somebody at the moon by sending another <laughs> rocket and people to uh, get there and bring them back. Right. Well, there was just no way to do anything like that. Did you feel disappointment? No, that I you felt weren't? a little embarrassed. You were in front of your father. No, because it was no, so important no, to him. No, because he he was talking to people that uh, when he didn't really understand the background. Let, let me he explain. He embarrassed you because when he was lobbying and carrying on, you were like, "Dad, he shouldn't have been in those offices that's, having that's, that's, that's right. Yeah. It's that's up right. to these guys, okay. right?" Now, when President Kennedy said, May 25th, 1961, yes. I believe that this believe nation this should this commit nation itself should before the decade is out of landing a man on the moon. He was right. And returning him safely. A lot of right? people don't well, understand wait, wait that. Wait a minute. He didn't say anything about going outside the spacecraft and walking around on the moon. Right. He said to land a man on the moon and uh, bring him back. Okay, that... Clearly, people in the space business who understand the progression of exploration know that the very most important uh, contribution of Apollo was demonstrating the ability to land on another object. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we didn't have spacewalking until the Russians uh, had Leonov go outside the Vashgod and uh, almost not get back in again. Right. So we trained my very good friend from West Point, Ed White, to do the first spacewalk on Gemini 4 with the maneuvering gun, and, uh, and we had to really convince him to come back in again. It was so successful uh, being outside the hatch of the Gemini uh, 4 mission. Were you confident that NASA knew what the hell they were doing when you absolutely, went up? You absolutely, were? yeah. <laughs> you like those guys. Uh, they know what they're doing. I you believe know, when we the should president be on Mars said we're already. going to the moon, yeah. we didn't know how to get there. We really didn't. Werner von Braun wanted a, a a Nova rocket, which wouldn't have been ready until way past the president's deadline, uh, 1970 or so. Right. We had a Saturn V under construction, <clears throat> but his calculations, Werner von Braun, was that we needed two of them to join up the stuff go to the moon directly and come back. It was an engineer. But weren't you nervous that this was just theory, that they were rushing too fast into this? No. That they weren't, that, in other words, because Kennedy said, we got to get a man on the moon now, that they were just going to rush. And who knows, this whole thing could have blown up. I mean, you must have well, been a little nervous about that. Well, they did test we, the rocket. As we the as rocket. a crew <laughs> and, and other people felt that <clears throat> you could turn around and come back at many times during the mission. Right. And you might have to do that, like Apollo 13, mm -hmm. before you got a chance to get to the moon. So we figured the chance, just unofficially, the three of us on Apollo 1, that it was about 60% that we would be able to successfully land. Right. But 95%. That if we weren't able to land, that we would be able to come back safely. 